Dear students, I am going to explain a few topics from unit 2. As I have uploaded already these slides on the model, but I want to explain each slide so that before coming to the class, you can be able to understand uh, what is what presented in these slides so that uh, it will be possible for me to conduct some activities as a flipped learning process. So, coming to characteristics, properties and use of materials. First one is aggregate properties. In aggregate properties, we have physical properties. The one of the main physical property is specific gravity. The ratio between the mass of a material and the mass of an equal volume of water. The specific gravity depends on the voids in the aggregate particles. So we are having different types of specific gravities like bulk dry specific gravity, bulk saturated surface dry specific gravity and apparent specific gravity. To determine the specific gravity is uh, very useful for Portland cement and it is required for Portland cement and asphalt concrete mix design. Let me explain here, if you consider this, these are the particles. So there are some gaps between the particles. The gaps between the particles can be called as voids. So take this volume. The brown color is material or sand. The blue color is water. So the open one is air, amount of air or volume of air. If you consider this as a solid particle, this is permeable void which permits moisture to enter into this void these are impermeable void there is no chance that moisture or water can be entered into these voids observe here the moisture is filling in this void so these are permeable voids these are impermeable voids so we have uh, formulas for bulk dry specific gravity bulk uh, saturated surface dry specific gravity and apparent specific gravity here we have these three formulas so you can observe in this diagram this is volume of sand from here to here it is volume of sand it is volume of water it is volume of air volume of water and volume of air together so v gamma this is the total volume is mentioned as v t I think you can easily compare this what is ws what is vs as it is mentioned in the formula next one in the aggregate properties the next one is gradation gradation means like grading the soil so how can we grade soil so the gradation means it describes the particle size distribution of the aggregate how the different sizes of particles are distributed in a sample. So large aggregates are economical for Portland cement and asphalt concrete as they have less surface area and therefore will require less binder. Large aggregate mixes are hard and more difficult to work into place because of due to this heavy weight and large aggregates. This gradation can be determined by using sieve test analysis as you are going to perform the sieve test analysis in your further laboratories laboratory experiments so the size of aggregate depend on how the size of aggregate is depends so we are having uh, different factors to uh, for the selection of the size of aggregate we can select the size of aggregate by dimensions of construction members uh, according to the dimension of the construction member we can select the dimensions of the aggregate which we can use in concrete its clearance between reinforcing steel and layer thickness so there are having we are having reinforcing meant reinforcing steel like steel rods we are having the gap between the steel rods so aggregate should not be more than that and about uh, the equipment capability the mixing equipment capability so these are the factors which we can select the size of aggregate
next one is aggregate properties so we have uh, how we can select the aggregate properties particle shape and surface texture so according to the shape of the particle shape of the aggregate and surface texture of the aggregate we are having two types of shapes like sharp corners and rough texture see if you observe this one this is having sharp corner and rough texture and rounded smooth textured aggregate so if you see something like this there are not totally but somewhat rounded and smooth textured aggregates these are the properties of the sharp corners and rough textured aggregates and these are the properties of the rounded smooth textured aggregates I'm just giving you an idea of how to read this slide. So I think these are uh, self understanding like these rounded smooth texture aggregates are less bulking, less stability. So I think uh, once you read this, you can able to understand. If you are not able to understand any point or any slide, you can you please note it down and let me know once I entered into the class, I'll first explain the things which you haven't understand when you are going through this video or when you are going through slides next one is the particle shape and surface texture so the particle shape of aggregate so it can be angular it can be rounded it can be flaky elongated flaky and elongated so flakiness flakiness describes the relationship between the dimensions of the aggregate so that is called as flakiness test so we are going to perform this flakiness and elongation test in your laboratory as a shape, shape test experiment so how to determine the particle is flat the particle is elongated and the particle is flat and elongated so concentrate on this I can ask you in the class how can you determine a factor as a flat particle so the shortest length is one and the longest the another middle length is uh, 3 so it, if it is it exceeds the 3 to 1 ratio then you can say the particle as 4 the ratio of the middle dimension to the smallest dimension of the particle exceeds the 3 to 1 so like that go through elongated particle and flat and elongated now coming to the important topic portland cement so let me concentrate much on this portland cement so what is a portland cement so it's a question can be asked expect in the classroom what is portland cement cement a cement as i already told when the cement is added with water it starts setting so it acts like a bonding material so an instant glue that bond the aggregate to make concrete so cement is a main bonding material for aggregate to act as a instant glue cement plus water is equal to glue is nothing but bond material see this diagram so this diagram gives you in what how the manufacturing process of portland cement so this video will help you to watch the total production of portland cement see i'll, I'll uh, teach you one by one how this uh, manufacturing of portland cement is going on the first one is raw materials what are the raw materials required for cement production limestone silica iron and aluminate so all these materials are gone through this primary crusher here we have primary crusher next all materials are transferred to silos silos means it's a tall structure or a cylindrical structure which we use generally for storing materials next one is crushed materials so all these materials are passed through this crushed area and the materials are crushed here next step is grinding in grinding mill the materials are grinded all the materials are mixed and grinded so we are having two types of process wet process and dry process you can learn more about wet process and dry process in your future subjects so next clean kin like uh, the raw materials are melted at 1400 degrees centigrade to 1650 degrees centigrade so all the raw materials are melted at this temperature this is a clinker 
next one is grinding so in the clinker is a grind once we do grinding it turns as a fine cement then all to the material gypsum is added at the end now finally the outcome is the cement so let me explain how what happens in the kiln if you consider this as a kiln limestone alumina silica and iron are added and it gives like tricalcium silicate all this mixture tricalcium aluminate tetracalcium alumino ferrite dicalcium silicate hydration of portland cement hydration means it can simply say that the setting of cement like hardening of cement all this process is called hydration the chemical reaction between the cement particle particles and water the hydration process is done in two ways like through solution and topo chemical so through solution you can observe in this diagram like dissolution of cement grains first next growing ionic concentration in water next formation of compounds in solution next compounds settle as solids it's known as hydration products so coming to topo chemical the solid state of chemical reaction occurring at the surface of the cement particle so this is a brief explanation about hydration process so what is hydration process it direct it generally means the cement paste will remain workable for about 45 minutes so the cement paste is going to uh, easy to work the, we can use the cement paste once mixed with water up to 45 minutes so it is able to work it is it is usable this paste begins to solidify within 2 to 4 hours after the water is added to the cement so this paste becomes solid and it cannot be able to use or cannot be able to place after 2 to or within 2 to 4 hours and there is a chance of uh, developing voids in hydrated hydrated cement voids means gaps so there are two chances of uh, uh, chances for developing voids in hydrated cement during cement hydrate so one is at the time of during cement hydrates next one is trapped in the cement paste during mixing so how this uh, at the time of uh, cement hydrates interlayer hydration space occurs between the layers it is too small to affect the strength while coming to capillary voids controlled by the ratio of water to cement so it depends upon the water cement ratio and which uh, decreases the strength and increases permeability while coming to trapped air at the time of preparing the cement paste there may be a chance of air getting trapped into the cement paste this reduces the strength and increases the permeability permeability means uh, which allows the water to pass through voids into the cement so uh, properties of hydrated cement so we are having different properties first one is setting um, so before uh, going into the setting topic let me go back once so what are the topics we covered is hydration of portland cement and the chemical composition of portland cement why i'm asking you to when you're reading you just go through the slides so that you can able to see all these uh, step by step process so what is cement and what is portland cement aggregate properties like particle shape and surface structure and what is gradation and what is specific gravity so i'll come back to you in another video explaining this setting process after all these slides i'll come back to you from this slide like properties of hydrated cement so please students so try to un follow my words and try to read something if you are not able to understand anything please note it down so that we can have a discussion in class about all these things see you again